for more on all this, let's bring in Dr. Peter Chin Hong. He's an infectious disease specialist at the University of Cal California, San Francisco. And, and Peter, I, I specifically asked to speak to you in moments like this uh, because as we see this new variant, we hear a lot of hype, but I wanted to hear from somebody like you, are, are you worried? Should the general public be worried at this moment? Well, um, Rui, I'm worried a little bit just globally because so many millions of people are still unvaccinated. And we know that if we have a turbocharged new variant, it's going to run like wildfire in the unvaccinated population. Nevertheless, uh, there are features of this uh, variant that make me concerned a little bit. Uh, the, the first is a number of mutations, which has not been seen in other variants. Uh, 30 is staggering in the spike protein and 10 of these are in the place where the spike protein attaches to the body. So I think uh, that's worrisome. But on the other hand, I think because it's similar, probably going to be similar to beta first described in South Africa and gamma first described in Brazil, we know that our current vaccines will likely work. The question is whether or not they'll be, get a little hit in a decline in efficacy. Do you think some of the travel restrictions being introduced will help mitigate the spread, or is it too late for that? I think it's too late, um, but uh, maybe it will reduce the risk a little bit. But again, like Dr. Fauci said, it's probably, you know, way uh, in way more countries than originally uh, appreciated right now. There's, been, there's a lot of travel between South Africa and Europe, South Africa and United States. So it's likely already here and sort of admixed within the population as we know it. And we need to, of course, distinguish between getting the virus, testing positive for the virus or a variant of the virus, and becoming severely ill. Is there any indication other than the fact that Omicron is more contagious, spreads more quickly, that it actually causes more severe illness? No, no evidence to that uh, as yet. It'll be interesting to see what some of these cases do. They are predominantly, at least in South Africa, in younger individuals aged 18 to 35, which you know only has about a 25% vaccination rate. So again, you know whether or not it will translate into more severe disease uh, needs to be said. My hunch is that it probably won't. Uh, that it will be kind of like a turbocharged, sorry, a turbocharged Delta with maybe a little bit more vaccine evasion, maybe. But um, you know, again, I think. It's a little bit of a downer in the holiday season when we thought, you know, everything was stable with Delta. A lot of people are now considering in the U.S. vaccinations for their children, some saying they don't get sick anyway, so why bother? It seems that these variants are a reminder of why bother, right? I mean, the virus needs hosts to mutate, and it doesn't really care how old those hosts are. Exactly. And, you know, I think that Omicron is definitely a reason to think about why we need to vaccinate so many of the population. Um, it's almost like an insurance policy for variants not yet known. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I got Delta. You know, what's the sense of getting vaccinated? We know that the vaccination is probably going to give you much more uh, better coverage against future enemies than the ones that you already encountered. Peter Jin Hong from the University of California, San Francisco. As always, thank you for your insight. Thanks so much, Rui.